Let's put our heads together for Jesus. I believe in some of our power. Since the time of John the Baptist's death, the kingdom of God is being preached. And everyone is forcing his way into it. Everyone is pressing his way into it. This is the standard of the kingdom of God since the time of John the Baptist. It shows that this man, John the Baptist, raised the bar. To such an extent that Jesus talked about him. He said, amongst men, born out of men. There is no one who is greater than John the Baptist. Yet it is John the Baptist. He used to feed with grasshoppers and honey. Yet it is John the Baptist. John the Baptist used to stay in the wilderness putting on some skin as his clothing. Yet Jesus is saying about him there is no man born out of men who is greater than John the Baptist. This John the Baptist was talking about he ended up being killed by King Herod for speaking the truth. For he spoke truth to power. He was a man of the truth. He was a man of integrity. And Jesus is saying about him, John the Baptist was greater than any man born of men. When we look at him according to the standards of the world, we will pity him. Who will say shame to him? Who will say his life is pathetic? Yet we don't know. Or yet we don't know that God's eyes are not our eyes. God's thoughts are not our thoughts. God's standard is not our standard. According to us, or our rating, we may look at a person and think this person is blessed because he has material possessions, because he has everything that we are looking for, and you consider that person blessed only to find that according to God's standard, that the person that you call blessed. He or she is the poorest of them all according to God's standard. For God's standard is not our standard. God's value is not our value. God's scale is not our scale. Hallelujah. When we have read the Bible says since the days of John the Baptist the kingdom of heaven or of God is being preached and everyone is forcing his way into it. Everyone is pressing his way into it. We are living in the time uh, of John the Baptist. The passage or the chapter of John the Baptist has trickled down to our generation. Therefore, we are also supposed to force our way into the kingdom of God. Why was everyone forcing his way into the kingdom of God from the days of John the Baptist? 
You need to push yourself into a miracle. So these people, they realize that they couldn't, they cannot reach where Jesus is. They improvise. They made a plan. They decided to poke the hole at the at the tiles, at the roofs. And lowered that sick man to where Jesus was. The Bible says when Jesus saw their faith, when Jesus saw their faith, for Jesus can see your faith. As much as Jesus can see your unbelief, when Jesus saw their faith that these people they troubled themselves they troubled themselves to such an extent that they poked a hole on the roof for the healing of their friend for the healing of their loved one no, 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 no. I must do something for them. I must do something for them. The Bible says Jesus healed that person. This is a sheer example of someone, of some people who forced their way into the kingdom of God. They improvise. They make a way. When there is no way, they make a way of reaching Jesus. They make a way of entering into the presence of God. Listen to me. If you give yourself pleasure, with the things of God, God will give you pleasure out of the things of this world. I repeat, when you give yourself pleasure with the things of God, God will give you pleasure out of the things of this world. Press your way to a miracle. Press your way to a solution. Press your way to a breakthrough. Sometimes it may take you to come and meet here and pray alone. Waiting for other Christians only to find that they don't come. They don't feel what you feel. They are not in your same boots. They are not in your same boots. When a soldier on, soldier on, you shall see the reward of the Lord. You shall see the reward of the Lord. When the Lord has answered you, then those people will come and celebrate you. Yet when, when we're doing it alone, yet when we're doing it being lonely, it was not hard. It was not easy. Force your way into a miracle. Force your way into a miracle. Force your way into a miracle. If it will take you to come to church regularly, so be it. If it will take you to attend the prayer meetings regularly, so be it. This God that we serve is a seeing God. This God that we serve is a God who sees what is done in secret and answers publicly. He will answer you. It will be a matter of time. When you are consistent in starting the way, when you are consistent in fasting, when you are consistent in prayer, when you are consistent in worshipping the Lord alone, not with a group, but alone. For it's very easy to do a thing with other Christians at church. But when you are alone, only to find that you can't do it. Learn to do a thing and master it alone in secret. Just like David, what he did. He killed the bear and the lion in secret. In secret. In secret. In secret. Learn to, to pray alone. Learn to study the word of God alone. 
Learn to fast alone. Take the kingdom of God by force. Or else the situations are going to force you to go down. That's right. The situations are going to force you to backslide. Take the kingdom of God by force. Force your way into a miracle. Force your way into a breakthrough. Press your way into a miracle. We also do it. We are giving ourselves pressure with the things of God. God is going to answer us. Shall we rise? Thank you, Jesus. From the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God has been preached and everyone is forcing himself into it. You need to take it by force. You need to take it by force. It's not the passive that will make it. It's not the passive that will make it. The passive will make it. Oh, I love It's not the weak that will make make it. I love It's the violent. It's the stubborn ones. It's the strong ones. Are those who stay put? Are those who keep on praying and having done all to pray, they pray again. Are those who keep on fasting, having fasted, then they fast time and again. They fast until they receive the answer. They believe until they receive the answer. They are consistent. They are stubborn in their faith. They are stubborn in their hope to God. They don't throw away their confidence in God. According to Hebrews chapter 10 verse 38. It says, do not throw away your confidence. Because it will be richly rewarded by God. Do not throw away your confidence. It will be richly rewarded by God. Force your way. Force your way into the kingdom of God. Press your way into the kingdom of God. Press your way. Use force to receive the answers from God. Do it until God notice you. Do it until God remark about you and say, even though I may think of doing it for others, but by the way Sophie is doing it, the way she stays put. She stays put. She doesn't do this. She goes there haphazardly. She stays put. She's planted in my kingdom. She abides in me. I want you to ask God. 